Hey friends, I ran across a new tool here recently and thought I would share it with you. It is called Genially. That's genial.ly. That's the website. Um, they have a nice little quote here. Creativity is intelligence having fun. And that's really what this site is all about. Creating different types of digital media. So this is a great tool in a multimedia class or if you are in a one-to-one -one situation and looking for creative ways to have students to illustrate something or demonstrate something, this is a good tool for it. You can see there's a lot of categories. So for example, there's presentation. That would be something that you would liken to say a PowerPoint or a Prezi. It's a little more like what a Prezi would be to be honest. Um, interactive designs, infographics, interactive images. So you can see here, these are the presentation types. When you choose a presentation, this is called Infinite Desktop. I'll just click on View. It shows you kind of what's going on here. Um, and you can see that as you click through uh, the different, what would be slides, I guess you would say, there's various animations associated with that slide. Um, so some cool little things going on on each of these. And then, of course, you can just change the content to be whatever it is that you need. So very simple to use and very simple to edit. And I'll show you how that works in a bit. Now, I will tell you, on the free account, you can have unlimited items. You can create lots of items. And you can upload your own photos to use. Um, but you can't download them. So you can't download, say, a PDF or an image version, although you really wouldn't want to with most of these designs because they are interactive. So you kind of need to have them online in order to access the videos and so forth. So let's look at one more. Uh, now I'm in this other category here. So let me click on view. This is ranking fashion. Um, some of these even are almost like web pages. Uh, I liken it to kind of the things I used to do in Flash. You can see here we can click on each of these buttons and a video would come up from it, from YouTube that we could then play right here in the browser. So 10 Favorite Moments 2016. Thinking of how you could use this in the classroom, um, you know, if you're one-to-one -one and your students have webcams, that sort of thing, they're recording, they can record videos on various things, link to those and include them in their designs. So that's an interesting way to use it. Lots of cool infographics that are very easily customizable. Now notice there is some premium content. There's a lot of premium content. So some of these things you cannot use unless you were to upgrade. Um, but many of them you can. And of course, most of them are very easily editable. So, you know, this is kind of a Christmas theme, but it wouldn't certainly have to be. And you can see this is a very long infographic. So very cool to uh, play around with. So let me just show you a few that I've worked on and a little bit about how it works. And I've only created about, you know, three or four items. So I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but I can give you kind of uh, my overview. So whenever you create something from scratch, you can click on create and then you can choose your category and a template to begin with. And there are more if you go farther over. As a business teacher, I find um, this resume, the curriculum vita category, to be really kind of cool because students could create then a digital resume of sorts. So I'm just going to click on use uh, for an example here so you can see how this starts if you're using a template. And it'll take a bit to load, but once it loads the template, then you've got the options to change the words. You can move items around, and there's a lot of different um, ways to interact with it as far as you can add animation. Um, you can add videos and so forth. So while that's loading, I'll pop back over here just to my Genially um, so you can see kind of what I've got so far. So here is one that I created that's more of a uh, an interactive, if you will, um, magazine cover. So in my Photoshop class, they do a magazine cover project and they have to find an original cover that meets specific criteria and then create their cover. And one of the issues with grading those is trying to find everything. So here you can notice that I've added little markers and then I've added text to indicate what's happening in those. And these would be things that are, say, required on the scoring guide. So to make it easier for me to score, they've got, they could put these little markers in here and then it shows me that, you know, this was drawn with the pen tool which is an advanced feature, or this is the barcode that they had to include, or the date and price that had to be included. A kind of a secondary way to make sure they're including all of their criteria in the project. All right, back here to the editor for this new document. So if I was creating this resume type thing, notice that it's kind of set up in pages. So there's like this page and then the experience page, this page two over here, um, the skills page and so forth. And and so there's various pages that you can work with. 
you can duplicate those pages or delete them if you don't want that particular section. And then if you're using a template, your various pages are also going to have uh, editable places. So you can see here, let me close the page pane. You can see here it says replace this image clicking the replace button. So I can click on this particular one and then hit replace. And then I can replace it with another document of my choice or, or whatever. So like if I have a picture of myself that I wanted to put in there, I can take my headshot. Notice that I do have to crop it because it is in a specific shape. So I can choose how to crop that if I want more of the picture or whatever. And then you hit save and it will replace that there. Um, when you insert images from scratch, you can also crop them into shapes as well. So you have lots of various options. Again, double clicking simply to change the text. Um, and there are a lot of fonts built into it and so forth. So really easy to use and really easy to edit. Some cool things that you can do are to add animation to your element. So for instance, here on this name, and I don't know, let's click preview if this name's already animated. Um, yeah, it is. So this, this name animates already, but you can add animation to objects. So let me just, for example, add another image. Let's say that I want to add something else. You just drop it in here. There is a maximum file size, so you have to be careful. Um, just put a picture of my daughter in here. Um, I'll just put a picture when she was a little bitty thing. All right, so you can drop an image in, and then, of course, you can resize. Um, you can also crop it to a shape, and I'll show you that, too. So I've got my little image here. If I want to crop it into a shape, there's a button called an image mask button. And then you can choose what shape to put it into. So there you go, very simply. Uh, put that in there. And then if I wanted that to have interactivity to it, I could add interactivity. Um, like I showed you, I had a marker and that sort of thing. You could do that. But let's say that I had a video of her when she was little and I wanted to have that video play. So I could select an interactive activity where it would open in a window. And then in that window, I can decide what's going to happen. Now, if it's a YouTube video, you would want to paste an embed code in here. So I'm going to YouTube here, and I'm not going to actually take the time to find an actual video from my family. So I'm just going to um, grab anything here. I'll grab this love song or whatever. But what you would do is click on Share and then Embed. And you would get the embed code, which is kind of a long code, but you take that. And then you just pop that into this code, but you got to switch it to code view. So I'm going to click on code view, and then you just paste that code in there. When you hit save, it's going to add that in there. And notice if I didn't want that, I could remove the interactivity. Um, so now if I click preview, and it comes up, again, it takes a little time to load. All the things are happening, and then here if I click on the picture, there's that video, and it comes up as uh, in its own little window. So lots of really cool things like that that you can do in here and probably way more than I'm even aware of. Um, you can animate that as well so I could have that as it enters move or I could have it continuously bouncing which would probably be kind of annoying but you could do it. Um, you can do that to pages, you can do that to objects. Just so many op options here that you can go with and you know my students would probably want to make that bounce up and down because it's fun. Uh, but uh, Anyhow, so whether you were doing this as, say, an electronic portfolio, um, having students to create infographics for uh, a topic that you're studying, just lots of uses for this Genially website. Now, once you have that, in order to share it, there is a share button. And then, of course, you can share the link to your project. And it would take you straight away to the actual project on Genially's website. You can't uh, really do much else with it in the free version, but you can see it puts it right in there So if I'm having students to submit this for grading They simply would just take that internet address on that share box and share that to me So anyway, I think it's a cool tool I plan to use it in my multimedia class and maybe even supplementary in classes like Photoshop for illustrating that they know what different things are so anyway have fun